hear that noise? That's the sound of the Toyota RAV4 hybrid cruising along with the engine off. Well, it's also the sound of me whispering, but it means you no longer need a diesel SUV if you want cost-effective motoring. Kicking off from 32,640 bucks, the all-new Toyota RAV4 hits the scene in Australia amongst a pretty strong set of competitors. This one right here is a trendy looking all-wheel drive cruiser hybrid variant that sits second from the top and carries a $44,640 asking price. Sitting on 18 inch black alloy wheels with privacy glass and black highlights, it cuts a pretty fine line. And dare I say it looks pretty good for a Toyota. Now, when I say it looks pretty good for a Toyota, I mean that Toyotas aren't strictly just bowls club cars anymore. They've got a bit of style and character to them now, and the new RAV4 is no exception. I reckon it looks really, really good in person. But in here is where Toyota has made the biggest strides, and it all starts here with this 8-inch infotainment screen. While it doesn't have Apple CarPlay at the moment, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will be upgradable free of charge later this year. So they'll just take it into the dealer, they'll stick it in there, it'll all happen. High res screen, easy to use, voice recognition as well. Down here, wireless phone charging, really handy feature. Five USB ports littered around the cabin, plenty of storage too. But the thing that makes it feel really premium is all the soft touch materials around the cabin. It feels like it's worth a lot more than it is. Other features I love as well, Look at this, it's like a little tyre around your dual zone climate control, so pretty clever stuff. Heated seats there too, and just an overall air to the cabin. Step back to the second row, you're going to find plenty of leg and headroom. You've got a centre armrest there as well, two USB charging ports, and two ISOFIX points on the two outboard seats as well. Step back one more row to the boot, you've got 580 litres of capacity, but the downside is there's a space saver spare tyre, but it is propped up by a dual tier setup, and you're not robbed of any space from the hybrid components because the batteries sit underneath the second row, which is pretty cool. Oh, and I forgot to mention as well, in front of me here, the seven inch display that shows your speed, the trip computer, and all the cool functions like where the torque is going. So very impressive setup there. Now, enough about all this interior stuff. Let's go for a spin and see if the new RAV4 is any good. I'll be the first to admit the old RAV4 wasn't really the most engaging drive in the world, especially if you found yourself stuck in a four-cylinder model. The V6 was much better, but slightly deadly. That thing had way too much power. This, on the other hand, is the perfect middle ground. The hybrid system capitalizes on efficiency, but also gives you a dynamic drive. So over there, we've got a two and a half liter four-cylinder petrol engine, and then there's a hybrid motor as well. It produces a combined 163 kilowatts of power, and then the petrol engine alone, 221 newton meters of torque. What does that all mean? Well, it means that you can get along whisper quiet just in the EV mode. But then, if you do want a bit of extra pep, nail the throttle, pins you nicely into the seat and gives you a highly engaging drive. Not what you'd expect from a RAV4. While some RAV4 variants have a conventional torque converter automatic gearbox, this, on the other hand, the hybrid uses a CVT. CVT stands for Continuously Variable Transmission, and it is arguably the best way to go about a hybrid system because you never feel the step changes as you're taking off in EV mode. Everything's nice and smooth. The only downside is that when you do get into the throttle, the engine can get a little thrashy because it is always keeping those revs up high to give you as much torque as it can. So, all-wheel drive, should you bother with it? Well, they've kind of come up with a pretty clever system here, Toyota, with the RAV4. It has an electronic limited slip differential and it takes advantage of having two motors, so one on the front wheels and then one on the rear wheels. So the one on the front wheels is there for efficiency and then the motor on the rear wheels is there for the dynamic driving. But then what it can do on top of that is brake individual wheels. So if you are off-road, and I mean that in the lightest sense possible, this isn't going to be a Prado and it'll go anywhere, but if you do find a wheel is in the air, it's able to brake that wheel and then send torque to the tractive wheel to then get you moving again. So it is an intelligent system. You have drive modes down here, so you hit the trail button, it gets the car ready in all-wheel drive mode for off-roading. You then have a sport function, which gets that rear motor running. An eco function takes advantage of the front motor and maximizes efficiency. And then there's a normal mode as well, and each of those modes can interact with the steering and throttle response as well. So it is a fully featured system. 
TNGA. What does that mean? Well, it's some silly acronym Toyota's come up with, but for you, all you need to know is that it is the all new platform the RAV4 rides on, and that's a really good thing because it's a platform shared between a number of Toyota products, and it means that it rides beautifully in and around the city and on country roads as well. And despite the fact you've got some extra weight here from the components of the hybrid system and the batteries, have really mastered a good balance between ride and performance as well. It can send up to 80% of torque to the rear axle when it is in its sporty driving mode. So it can be pretty engaging to drive in addition to being super comfy. Now, if the hybrid badge doesn't make your inner greenie smile, the fuel efficiency well and truly will. 4.7 litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle. That is absolutely remarkable for an SUV, and it means you don't need to get your hands dirty at the diesel pump. That is what you had to do previously to get those kind of fuel efficiency figures. So it really is a no compromise package that's giving you efficiency, space, and everything that you need from an SUV. Servicing is going to happen every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres. It's going to set you back $210 for the first five services. That is pretty cheap for this segment. And on top of that, you get Toyota's five-year warranty as well. So from an ownership point of view, this is a pretty cost-effective car to own. Overall, the new RAV4 is a really good thing, but there are some negatives. It's not quite the perfect car. There's no heads-up display. Some models in this segment come with a heads-up display, and it'd be a really handy feature to have. The 360 camera in 2019, the quality of that is nowhere near good enough. There's no reverse AEB. And then the other thing as well that I don't really like is the pristine quietness of the hybrid system is then interrupted by a really thrashy engine every time you get on the throttle and it needs to start moving. Would have liked a bit more noise suppression in the cabin from the engine. The all new Toyota RAV4 is in dealerships right now. Should you spend an extra three grand for the hybrid? Yep, absolutely. It is a sensational car to drive and arguably it is one of the best SUVs in the segment. It offers space, practicality, efficiency, and it's really fun to drive as well, which is not something we would often say about a Toyota. To read more about the all new Toyota RAV4, head to caradvice.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.